Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sacred Heart Jesus Catholic Church. Good to see all of you here this morning and those who are uh, watching either live or later on today uh, through our live stream. Uh, Appreciate having all of you. So this is starting, right? Huh? I'm a little close to the camera, okay. So how am I supposed to do my announcements without... Good to have you with us here today. Uh, a couple of things before we begin, Max. First of all, you may have seen the big poster out there. The uh, uh, diocese normally puts on a taste of faith seminary and fundraising dinner in early August before the seminarians go back to school. Uh, and it's a big dinner, and they raise quite a bit of money in the support of the seminarians. Unfortunately, with COVID, they've had to cancel it, the live gathering, and they're going to do a live stream of it from the House of Formation on Saturday, August the 8th at 7 p.m. It's going to be available throughout the state. And uh, so, first of all, you're encouraged to watch. Second, and learn more about the 30 seminarians that we will have uh, studying this year in formation for the priesthood. We have two being ordained on August 16th, thanks be to God, and five will be ordained deacons, uh, transitional deacons, in the month of August. So uh, that we have much reason for optimism here in Arkansas, uh, and yet we need to uh, continue to support them. Our Knights of Columbus started having a taste of faith a seminary fundraiser a number of years ago. We were scheduled to have one this past Friday, but again, we had to cancel because of uh, COVID. So we are kind of in union with what the diocese is doing with their taste of faith online. Actually, we're going to have a watch party downstairs for those who would like to come and do the social distance with the masks and be together as we watch it on the big screen. And I know the diocese has been sending out uh, solicitation uh, letters or uh, letting you know about this fundraiser, this case of faith, and asking for a donation. Uh, certainly the most important thing is we donate and help if you don't, if it's at all possible for you to do so. But I'm here to plead that you give your donation to our Knights of Columbus uh, taste of faith. Uh, we don't we need not only the Knights to come forward, but our parish, which has done so through our taste of faith for the last seven, eight years at least. So, if you are interested in giving a donation to the seminarians, uh, either before or after the uh, taste of faith, uh, if you can watch it, uh, I urge you to put it in an envelope. Uh, there's an address uh, for Rick Darnell. You can send your check to him. 
them by mail, or you can put it in an envelope, put your name on it, uh, put it on the memo line. Seminarians make a check out to Knights of Columbus and uh, put it in one of our baskets, and we'll make sure the Knights get it. So please give that some thought. They need the money. Obviously, they can't uh, postpone the, the seminary's education for the year. Uh, it has to go on, so they would appreciate your uh, gift. And uh, with also one of our dear Christians, Lady Mavis passed away this uh, last week, a few days ago. Lady uh, and Kathy were longtime members here. He was very much active in the nights, in the men's club, uh, was the head of the ushers for a while, uh, was an usher at the 5 o'clock mass. It was a, a wonderful craftsman. A number of items up here. I know I have to look far to see uh, Lady's handiwork. He was a great woodsman, uh, being able to come up with whatever we needed for him to uh, produce, including the amber with the holy bulls in the back back there. So his funeral is going to be tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a rosary at 1040, and we're going to have viewing starting at 10 o'clock here in the church. And if uh, you can't make it for his funeral, it is open to anybody to come. There will be no reception, however. Uh, if you can't come, uh, those who will be back to live stream uh, Lady's funeral for the sake of family that are uh, in other states and anybody who wants to watch. Again, it's uh, facebook.com slash frwillbox. Okay, shall we stand? Let's begin to celebrate with the Eucharist for this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us pause as we come before the Lord, ever seeking God's mercy for those times we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you came down from heaven to share in our humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen our faith. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for those times that we have failed in faith, hope, and your love, forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Now let's praise our God by reciting the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, our mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and God, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. King Solomon ruled about 950 years before Christ. His wisdom was legendary. Today's reading describes an event from early in Solomon's rule that tells how he became a wise person. 
A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me, your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Today's reading is from a part of the book of Isaiah, written when the Jewish people were exiled in Babylon. This section is often referred to as the Book of Comfort. Hmm. When the Jewish people, uh, because of the encouragement it gives, today's passage is a glorious finale. Today's reading concludes the 8th chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans. This chapter reflects on the salvation brought about by God through Jesus. 
Paul concludes this chapter with a jubilant hymn that celebrates the love of God expressed in Christ. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field again. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I begin my homily, I forgot to recognize and give thanks for the beautiful flowers we have in the sanctuary. Those in front of the altar were donated by Russ and Sheila Harrison in honor of their late son Randy's birthday, which actually would have been today, July 26th. He was born in 1977. And those on either side of the tabernacle were donated by Jim and Judy Heezer in celebration of their 55th wedding anniversary. Though I watch very little uh, television on my own, in fact, I uh, canceled my last service and we'll see how long I can go without watching a television. Uh, it probably won't be very difficult because I wasn't watching much anyway. When I'm at my mom's, I do watch uh, a little bit of television with her because that's what she says, I keep it on for the noise. And she also watches some programs regularly, including one that's called America Says. It is another game show. It's on the Game Show Network. It's on, I think, at uh, 6, 6.30 and 7 o'clock on weekdays and maybe other times as well. That's the only time I'm there. And it pits two teams of four against each other. And they have to try to answer what uh, a group of, of, of people, Americans obviously, how they responded to a question. And they put the top answers up there with one letter. And they have to try to guess what those are. And the team that wins goes to the bonus round. And in the bonus round, uh, one team has 60 seconds to answer uh, four questions, and each one has a different number of uh, popular answers. The first one, one, second one, two, third one, three, fourth one, four. If they answer all of those, I think that's 10, then they win $15,000. 
Well, I decided to do a little version of that today called Catholic Says. Maybe I should have said in parentheses, Father Bill Says, because some of these might reflect my own uh, thinking on these things, answers to these questions, but I think it, more than a few of them reflects the Catholic Church's view. And so uh, we're going to say you're in the bonus round. You've already made it to the bonus round. And you have a chance not to win 15000 but uh, if you get all, if I get all of them right, you're going to win some of my homemade ice cream. All right? How's that sound? But one thing, you have to not only get all the answers, you have to be able to spell all of them correctly. All right? I think that's going to eliminate any ice cream being given. We'll see. All right? Very good. So the first one, uh, which is always the easiest on the show, because there's only one answer, and they make it a pretty easy one, is the following question. What is the most valuable and longest lasting thing that anyone could have? Faith. Okay, see, I told you it was easy. All right, that's the first one. Faith. You got it as quickly as some do on that show. They get it in that first second. They are able to get it. Faith. It is the most valuable and the most long-lasting thing that anyone could have. Our belief is faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's a value that we can't even imagine. Jesus in the Gospel talks about the treasure and the pearl of great price. We would say the church, that faith is that greatest of things that we could have because it is definitely long-lasting. Okay, what about the second one? Second question is, what are the two most important things that mothers give to their children? If you said love, you've already made one mistake. All right? Uh, what is the second one? Okay, the first one, you got life, some of you. And the second is? No, not food. All right? No, not food. Faith! you got to follow along here, all right? Life and faith. You have to have your life. It came from your mom. That's most important. You wouldn't be here. And the faith you have is also the second most important thing. From life and faith will certainly come love and much more besides. And we have to give thanks and should for the faith that's been passed on to us, that's been nurtured in each one of us, from our moms, our dads, and others, that lead us, even in this pandemic, to come together, to be together, those who are uh, feel called and comfortable in doing so, to celebrate the Eucharist, and to be strengthened in our faith. Okay, number three. Actually, normally on this show, the fourth is the hardest one, but uh, this one, I think the third is the hardest. The third question is, uh, name three great examples of faith. And these, give you a little hint, were the three people that the church celebrated this past Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Don't pull out any give us this day or anything. All right, too late. Too late. All right, the answers are actually the robocall yesterday in the late afternoon. I gave you one of them. You were listening. The Apostle James. James the Apostle. That was yesterday. And on Thursday, it was. Oh, and some of these are perhaps the. I've got to, maybe it'll make a difference, I don't think so, but uh, number three actually should be a B, not an E. Does that help anybody? I didn't think so. All right. It's actually Bridget of Sweden. And then the second one is Charval Mar Makuf. All right. 
the city I knew, uh, that would probably be the one that would definitely solidify it. If you don't know how to spell his name, you probably wouldn't get it. It's M-A-K-H-L-U-F. Let me tell you just a little bit about these three saints. Saint Bridget of Sweden. She had such great faith in the Lord that showed itself throughout her life. She was blessed to have eight children. And one of those eight, Catherine, ended up later on being declared a saint. She must have been pretty good at passing on the faith to her children. And after her husband died, 20 years into their marriage, she gave her life to the Lord, the third order of Franciscans. In fact, she founded a religious order that had both uh, nuns and monks living in separate monasteries, but coming together and doing the Lord's work in caring for the poor and the sick. St. Bridget lived a wonderful life of faith that showed itself early on and throughout her long life. She is one of the co-patronesses of Europe. There's six uh, patronesses of Europe and she's one of them. I'll go ahead and take the, the easy one, John, James the Apostle, obviously a strong person of faith who followed Jesus as one of the twelve, as one who uh, was the first bishop of Jerusalem, also the first of the apostles to be martyred, someone whose faith really shone brightly after the uh, Pentecost, when he had the opportunity after that to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And then Charbel Makouf, as I looked him up to see how to pronounce his name, I found a little video that told about him. He was uh, a monk who died on Christmas Eve, 1898. And for most of his life, he chose the life of a hermit, living apart for the most part from the world. I think of him now, uh, there's maybe more than a few of us that uh, that looks pretty good to get away from the world in which we are living right now. And he isolated in the name of his faith in God. And he lived such a wonderful life of faith that after he died and was buried in a shallow grave, a light, it's reported, shone around his grave for 45 days. And then after that, his body was exhumed and it was incorrect. And over the next 50 years, people came to his tomb and prayed, asking for his intercession for a variety of reasons, usually because of sickness. And in that time, there was reported over 300 cures. About 119 of them, people who had terminal illnesses. 20 of them uh, of the Muslim faith who were cured. Here's a person whose faith in God that was nurtured in the desert led him to have a special place in heaven. And his intercession continued to bless the people of that part of the world in Lebanon for many, many years. The gift of faith. We talk about James, Charbel, and Bridget giving up so much for that great pearl that is faith in Jesus Christ. And that leads me to the last question. The last question is, what are the rewards of faith? Four of them. The rewards of faith. Hope. Love. Peace. And I hope everybody gets the last one. Eternal or everlasting life. 
that in itself gives us great reason to find our faith ever strengthened each day and realize that God has a plan for us that goes beyond this world and all its troubles and challenges to what he has prepared for us, people of faith, in his heavenly home. I have to quote, I read this this morning. This was somebody who wrote an article about what's going on right now and how what is most important is people to have faith and to be strong in their faith. This is the conclusion of the article. He says, keep a cool head, stay alert, keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. Keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternally glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. But we echo that in the faith lives that we live every day. And now let's stand please and together let's profess our faith through the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having just professed the great faith, the uh, faith of the Nicene uh, Council of Nicaea, seeking to grow in faith through God's grace and be examples of faith for others, we now bring to the Lord in faith these prayers and petitions. For the Church of Christ and all who dwell within her, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local civil servants, and for all who assist them in their governance, may God grant them wisdom and understanding hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who grieve the loss of a loved one who died from the effects of the coronavirus, may God console them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us and our communities of family and friends, may God grant us courage and guide our words as we share our faith with those we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions dear to our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of our sick, that God will grant them comfort and healing power, especially Tony Nicodem, John Diaz Alessandro, Marianne Lemaine Johnston, and Martha Urena. And for those recently deceased, especially Christine Menden, and Lanny Mavis and Regis Philbin, that God will grant them eternal rest and 
a comfort and strength to the family left behind. We pray to the Lord. Lord O oh, good and loving Father, we put our trust in you. May that trust grow ever stronger as you strengthen our faith, as you help us to look past all the challenges of this life and recognize that your Son is one for us, the greatest of prizes, everlasting glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Father, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Bridget, St. Charbel, St. James the Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life, and forever praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, power, and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Just turn those around us and wait the reading of Christ.